my dear and the sisters in Islam, a few months ago, when I was told that I have to speak about green deen, so I thought maybe they want me to rap over here, because you know it sounds like native deen, which are based from Baltimore, Maryland, and green deen sounds more like a rap. Do you want me to rap? I don't. I don't think you want me. Just a few people over here. Let me hear one more time. You want me to rap? But I'm an imam in a masjid. I never rapped. I'll try my best to start off with it. Because I wrote some words on my drive down here from New Jersey. And I feel this is my first time. So please don't embarrass me if I mess up on the rap. But I will only rap if you join me in the chorus. And the chorus words are Green Dean Yo. So can you say Green Dean Yo one more time? A bit more, one more time. Green Dean Yo. All right, let's start then. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Green Dean Yo, remix Yo. Green Dean Yo, green mix Yo. I've been living in a greenhouse, carefully emitting no gas from my mouth. Green Dean Yo. Green Dean Yo. Green Dean Yo. Waste not water nor air, be firm with earth's care. Hair is here, yo. Green Dean, yo. Green Dean, yo. Green Dean, yo. Allah made in perfection so we can get to our destination. Jannah with the henna, yo. Green Dean, yo. Green Dean, yo. Plant a tree for free, see your kids free. Green Dean, yo. Green Dean, yo. Thank you. That's the first time in my life I tried that, so. Is that the end of the speech? Can I go now? All right. You know why it's called Green Dean? Anybody know why it's called Green Dean? Rough idea? When you think of green, what's the first picture comes in your mind? Huh? No. You're too far. He said nature. He's too far out. As a mu'min, as a believer, as a Muslim, as a follower of Muhammad Sallam, when you think of green, what's the first thing comes in your mind? Huh? Where? Medina. Thank you, sister. Medina. A big round of applause for the sister here, inshallah. Medina is green with the green dome over there. And sometimes you wonder that's where the Westerners got the word green from. Because the first human being to tell the world to protect the environment was none other but our and my and your Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said in a hadith, in a very beautiful hadith, which I relate from Abu Sayyid al-Khudri, he said that Prophet Muhammad said, Inna dunya hulwatun khadratun wa inna Allah mustakhlifakum fiha fanyanzur kayfa ta'amalun. Translation, Abu Sayyid al-Khudri reported that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the world is sweet and green. In a dunya halwatun wa khadiratun. Khadira from akhdar, green. So the earth is beautiful and it's sweet. Sweet not just in its water being sweet and the land being sweet, but the earth is a sweet place to live and raise a family. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us wise jerrods, khalifa on this earth. Inni ja'aluka fil ardi khalifa. Allah is saying that he is making us as Adam and the children of Adam as a wise jirin, as a caretaker. And that is why Rasul said, Indeed, verily, each one of you are a shepherd and you are responsible for your flock. So we as human beings on this earth, living collectively as 7 billion people, we have a burden of responsibility on our shoulders to leave the earth for the next generation in its pure intact form. That's why we call it Green Dino. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us accountable on Yawm Al-Qiyamah to ask us, 
Did you preserve the earth for your future generations? Humanity has been living here for years and years, thousands of years. We inherited this earth from our ancestors. How did they take care of it? In fact, the current generation of humanity is the worst in terms of taking care of this earth because we have so many uh, fossil fuels, we have so many gases being emitted because we have cars, we have airplanes, we have rockets, you know, we have ships, we have so many things over there now in transportation where the previous generations a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, they were riding horses and camels and donkeys and mules. And the only thing they emitted was fertilizer for the land. Think about it. The emission coming from animals is fertilizer for the land. That is how recycling happened. We living in this modern era, we have bathrooms and toilets where we flush water. According to some statistics online, you can Google, I search, there are like so many billions of water that we flush out just from the bathroom of seven billion people around the earth. Whereas back in the old days when they didn't have toilets and bathroom with these flushes, they would go and take a dump where? Has anybody done that? If you lived in a village, if you lived in a gao or a village or a town or qarya, there's no toilet or bathroom in the houses. And when you say, I want to go to the bathroom, you say, go out in the bushes, go out in the jungle. And that is why they would go out far away from the dwellings and take a dump over there. And that dump would become manure and fertilizer for the ground. Today, they produce fertilizers in factories and industrial organizations, whereas the society that was arranged back then, thousands a year ago, more than that, is that people would recycle what you eat. And here we are putting flushing through the water and everything, and all that water is also being wasted. Sometimes you just wonder how many gallons of water every day we flush down the toilet. Is that green? Is that preservation of society? And that is why Rasulullah said that in dunya halwa dun khadira wa in Allah mustakhlifakum fiha fa yanzur kayfa ta'malun and Allah has made you responsible caretaker on this earth of this beautiful green earth and this beautiful sweet earth so that you are careful that what do you do? Mada ta'malun. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us ra'i because we do a lot of fasad. We do a lot of corruption on earth. As human beings, we mess around with this earth, with this natural greenery. We uproot trees to build nice urban sprawl of houses. We uproot farmlands and greenery just to have more dwellings for the human appetite to be able to live. And that is why Allah said in Surah Rome, Surah 30, verse 41, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعد الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون Corruption has appeared throughout the land and sea by what the hands of the people have earned so they may see and taste part of the consequence of what they have done. Perhaps they will return to righteousness. In another ayah, Allah says in Surah Ma'idah, verse 64, We fil ardi fasada, and they strive on earth with corruption. Wallahu la yuhibbul mufsideen, and Allah doesn't love the corrupt ones. Allah doesn't love the people who try to disrupt the natural ecosystem of life that is there on, around on this earth that we have. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran in so many places, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا Eat and drink, but do not waste food. Like my dear colleague, Dr. Sabil, just mentioned a few moments ago here on the earth, that how much food we waste, not just in this country, but anywhere in the world. And we have an obligation as parents. We have an obligation. How many parents are out there? Let me see. Anybody with parents? Pretty much parents. The biggest irony for parents when coming to feed kids are, you know when the kids say, Mom, what's for dinner? Leftover from lunch. Oh. Why not something fresh? What's wrong, honey, eating what's left over from lunch? I cooked it fresh today in lunch. Why not? 
our generation X or Y or Z, whatever you want to call it, that's coming up, they are so restless because of these beautiful gadgets that we have given them that now they're restless with food. They don't want to eat leftover food from the day. Forget about the leftover food from yesterday or two days ago. We have refrigerators. Human beings invented refrigerators. There was no refrigerator in the time of Rasulullah. Whatever you cook today, you have to consume today. Otherwise, it'll go sour and bad. We are so lucky that we have refrigerators. Is. The freon gas that is in these refrigerated compressors is also a fossil fuel that is being emitted in society. Just see how much disruption we are doing in this society. We have leftover foods for those families who at least worry about food. I know many families who don't even have leftover foods in their refrigerators. Either they are too poor to have leftover or they just throw away the leftovers. If you don't believe me, just try poking into someone's garbage can when the garbage day is out there on the sidewalk and the garbage can is there. You can smell rotten food. You don't even have to delve deep down into the garbage can. You can just walk past by it. You can smell rotten food, rotten biryani, rotten maklube, rotten, you know, mansaf, rotten palau, rotten nihari, rotten paya. Why? Because that was just sitting there and wasting. We waste so much food and Allah SWT says, wala tusrifu. Do not waste food. Teach our kids to consume whatever is left over. We need to make our kids appreciate that there are so many millions of people overseas who don't even eat three meals a day. You are lucky, son and daughter, that you are being fed three meals a day every day. So if mom doesn't feel like cooking today and what she left over from yesterday, it's okay to eat that. Don't ground, don't moan, don't whine, don't make faces, appreciate the food because if you don't eat this food someone else will eat it and that is why we need to do tarbiyah for our children nurture them and nourish them that this is ni'mah risk is from Allah do not mistreat risk do not abuse food there are so many people who throw food on the floor and deliberately or indeliberately unknowingly there are so many people who take so much in the food and then they don't eat it and leave it in the plate and it sits on the countertop on the table and rotting. Most of all, when we go to restaurants, what, it, what do they call that in the restaurant where you can eat everything? Huh? Buffet. Buffet is the biggest enemy of green being. You know why? Because you have a big appetite. How many stomach do you guys have, by the way? I only, I only got one. How many do you have? Anybody got two stomachs in their belly? I don't think so. We only got one stomach. You see a big sign out there on the restaurant, all you can eat buffet, $20.99, $19.99. Oh, let me go get there. 40 items, 50 items. Your appetite is growing. You go in there, you only have one stomach, you have two, three plates, you pile up a mountain on the plate, but you only can eat so much. And what happens with the food left over on your plate? It's not my plate, it's not his plate, it's not her plate, it's not their plate, it's your plate. When you leave it behind, does the restaurant allow you to take that food? In buffets, they don't allow you. Sometimes, and somewhere they might. But if that restaurant has that leftover food on the plate, where is it going? Where is it going, guys? Astaghfirullah. I even hate to say the word garbage. When I see kids eating from garbage in Somalia, Sudan, Syria, refugees, Yemen, refugees, Iraq, refugees, Afghanistan, refugees, Pakistan, Myanmar, Burma, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and the whole nine yards. We need to show our kids these images. If you're not going to take your kids overseas to give them a tour, a vacation in a third world country where people have very meager resources and very less food, at least show them these images on YouTube, on Facebook and say, look, honey, this is what they're eating. They're eating rotten food. This is the refugees in the tents, in the camps. They're eating bread that is four days old, it's hard as a stone, and they're putting it in the water, and it still doesn't get soft enough to eat in their mouth. We need to learn green deen, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. We need to know what is greenery in the sense that we educate and train the next generation of Muslims who conserve, who hold back. And that is why we learn from the Sunnah of Rasulullah that he was a person who would always make ends meet. He was a person who would always try to 
keep up with things that he would have. He was not extravagant and luxurious that, okay, something tore apart, something ripped, something went bad, and he would say, oh, okay, let me get a new one. No, he would not do that. Rather, this is a hadith from Asiya, she says, who is one of the wife of Rasulullah, she said that Prophet was asked that what did he do in the house? She replied to the inquirer, ما يصنع أحدكم في بيتي يقصف النعل ويرقع الثوب ويخيد. He, عليه الصلاة والسلام, did what one of you would do in his house. He mended sandals, and hear this out. And he patched garments. Patched garments mean that if there's a hole in my kamis or shalwar or anything you have, there's a small rip or torn, I would put a patch. Rasul Salam used to put patch on his clothes. If his clothes got ripped, he wouldn't just throw it all in the garbage. Oh, this cloth is no good. Let me buy another one. Let me get another from Giorgio Armani, from Gucci, from Hilfiger, from this and that, because I got a lot of dough in my pocket and I can go and afford that. That is not my and your prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would put patches on his garment. I don't have patches on my garment and I doubt any of you have patches on your garment. But this is our role model our Uswa Hasana, how he led a life of conservatism and conserving things. And he would be suing also and mending his sandals. I'm surprised at our kids sometimes when they say, Dad, I got a small tear on my, just a small crack, small tear on my Nike sneakers. I need to go get another one for $200. No problem, just put a patch on that. How many cobblers you see on the streets of America? But if you go to Pakistan, India, or any other Muslim country, you'll see cobblers. You know what a cobbler is? Anybody know what a cobbler is? Huh? What does he do? He mends your sandals, your shoes. That's what the cobbler is doing. His risk, his, his job, his provision is coming from other people's torn shoes and sandals. What if we never mended our shoes and sandals? He'd be out of business. Cobblers will be out of business. I come from Pakistan, from one of the largest cities in Pakistan, Karachi. We have a lot of cobblers on the streets over there. And you can easily fix your sandals and shoes at least 10 times, 20 times, and still run out and will not run out. Here in America, a slight tear, a slight wear, and I am out there at Adidas, at Nike, or any shoe store trying to get my next shoe out over there. Is this green doing, yo? You tell me, yo. It's not green, Dean. It's about time we teach our next generation, our kids, how to live with these meager resources. The previous generation was a generation that lived with the motto and slogan and memorized this, this phrase, do more with less. Do more with less. They did more with less what they had 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. What is our generation doing in 1443 in 2022? You've flipped the phrase. We do less with? We do less with? More. We got more. We got a lot. How much you want? Three sneakers. Open up your wardrobe. That's why he was there. My, his wardrobe was empty. That's what he's supposed to talk about. But his wardrobe is not empty. Our wardrobes are full. Party wear, casual wear, school wear, office wear, this wear, that wear, that wear. Keeps going on. Never ends. You know the wardrobe of Saddam Ali bin Waqas? You know the wardrobe of Anas bin Malik? And many of the other Sahaba? Only two pieces of clothes. Wash one, wear one. Wash one, wear one. And with all due respect to sisters, need I say more? Do husbands have more bigger wardrobe or the wives have more bigger wardrobe? Come on, let's do a competition. Husbands, what do you say? Are your wardrobes bigger or her wardrobe bigger? All the husbands are scared. They are so scared. I want to go back home tonight. I want to go back home after this convention. Dare I say her. The message is we all are in this together. This is our earth, our society. Husband and wife 
are two sides of the same coin. It's not us versus them or them versus her or her versus him, him versus her. We are in this together and we need to cultivate a culture of conserving resources and doing more with less, not the other way around. And I also want to mention here that one of the things that Rasul said in the hadith which is narrated by Anas ibn Malik, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يتوضا بالمد ويغتسل بالساعة إلى خمسة أمداد. Whenever I read this hadith, I start crying. You know why? Because I am the biggest sinner of this hadith. What is he saying? He's saying that Rasul Sam used to make wudu with one mud of water. One mud is this. This much water. Can any one of us, including myself, do wudu with this much water? He used to make ghusl with two mud or khamsa amdad, which is almost like this much. Ghusl. Here we have showers, running water, we have running faucets. We're so lucky here in the Western society that we have running faucet. Talk about those ladies in Rajasthan, India that have to walk 20 miles just to get water for the day. Talk about the sisters in Dhaka, in Chittagong, who have to walk 10 kilometers just to walk to get a water. Oh, done? Okay. We are so lucky that we have water everywhere. We have electricity everywhere. Try to take your kids to third world countries, wherever we immigrate from, take them for a vacation, not for enjoyment, for learning how people do more with less. You know, when I took my kids to Pakistan, especially from Karachi, there's, uh, there's, there's uh, rolling blackouts. You know, there's no electricity. Load shedding, they call it. Load shedding. They, know, they never have the load. So what are you talking about shedding anything? So 10 hours a day, the fan doesn't move. 10 hours a day, the air condition cannot work. And you're there huffing and puffing with a, with a paper fan or something. 10 hours a day, no electricity, so you can't get the water pumped up to your tank, so you have a running faucet water. These, this is reality of a society that is living. We are living in luxury. So we have a bigger, bigger responsibility to do what? Green Dino. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum.